Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a tutorial and playthrough for the Princes of Florence. So I'm joined tonight by Robert. Hello. And Pete. Hi. Uh, we've already played this game this afternoon. So what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be doing a rolling teach. I will teach you a lot of the rules up front, but not any specific gory details. We'll explain them as we're going through it. Uh, the idea of this video is to, well, first of all, if you bought this game, to show you how it plays. Uh, and if you are thinking about buying this game, this video is designed to show you how it plays so you can make your own decision about whether you want to buy it or not. This is a sponsored video from the publisher, uh, WizKids. WizKids are one of my clients, so thank you very much to them uh, for sponsoring this video. Because it's a sponsored video, you're not going to get any opinions. We, are, we have been talking about the game after our game this afternoon, so we all know what we think about the game but we won't be sharing them with you uh, tonight. We're actually filming this live on Friday night, the 16th of June. This is going out live to patron supporters, so thank you very much to all of my patron supporters for funding the channel, and to those people that are watching us live. I will then take the video down, edit it a little bit, and get it uploaded for the public next week. Just in case we do make any mistakes tonight, not in the rules, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get the rules right, uh, but if we do make any slight playthrough mistakes and they aren't spotted, until after the video's gone live, please let me know. Leave me a comment and let me know. And what I will do is I will add in some Klingon subtitles into the video. So if you're watching this video, turn on the subtitles, change it to the Klingon channel. If there aren't any subtitles, great. That means we didn't make any mistakes. Uh, but if there are any little things that we might have got wrong, like somebody buys something and forgets to pay for it, which does happen sometimes with these live streams, then yeah, I'll put, I'll put them in the Klingon subtitles. So I mentioned that we're filming this on Friday the 16th of June. And Robert, earlier on today, he reminded me, I say reminded me, <laughs> I, I didn't know this, uh, but it's actually the birthday of one Giovanni Boccaccio, who is an Italian writer around the, well, a, a writer, poet, correspondent of a word I can't read, and an important Renaissance humanist. So he, he wrote a book or a story called The Decameron, De Decameron, which yeah. I haven't read. She's but... about David Cameron? No. <laughs> <Don't> think... <laughs> I think it's got 10 people in it, and they're basically telling stories to each other, something like that. Right. So it was a big thing in its time in the Renaissance. There you go. And this game is The Prince of Florence. So this is an updated version of uh, a game from originally came out in 2000. I have an original copy of this game from 2000. And I played this a lot 20 odd years ago. The rules of the game haven't changed. So if you already know the original Princess of Florence, the rules haven't changed. But if you want to know about the other stuff that's included in here, because there's a solo mode, there's a mini expansion, there's a cooperative building mode, we're going to cover, the, cover those at the end of the video. I'll timestamp the video. So if you don't want to learn how to play Princess of Florence because you already know, but you want to learn the new stuff, you can skip to the end of the video and it will be there. Uh, but basically, yeah, we are each the head of an Italian aristocratic dynasty and we are supporting builders, artists and scholars to try and complete works of art in order to bring our families fame and prestige. That's what we're trying to do. So the way that this is represented in the game is that we're going to be playing over seven rounds and we are trying to move our marker here along the prestige track and the player with the most prestige wins the game. We're going to give you a brief overview at the start and then we'll explain the rest as we go on. But essentially, one of the things that you're going to be doing in the game that's going to be generating you a lot of points is hiring professional artists, of which there are 21 included in the game, to create works of art for you. This is a game for one to five players. The original game was three to five players. Uh, there are rules in here for a two player game and there's also a solo mode as well. So the new version is one to five players. We're playing the three-player game today. Now, the three-player game does play a little differently to the four-player game. The rules are the same. The rules are the same, but the way it plays out is differently. Uh, and the five-player game has a different feel to it as well. There may be a couple of points in this video where I will talk about things. Um, and in a three-player game, yeah, it, it plays out slightly differently. So let's just zoom in quickly to this area of the board. And let's show you some of these cards that we're going to be using to create works of art. So this is the Philosopher. Uh, this is the Bellcaster, uh, this is the, what's that? The Dramatist. So there's 21 professions in the game, and they're all unique. However, down the left-hand side, these are all very, very similar information. So basically, the top line, or the top thing on each one, is a particular type of landscape. It's either a forest, it's a park, 
or it's a lake. Each of the professions, each of these artists, likes to have a particular type of landscape. The next one is the freedom. Uh, they each prefer to have a particular type of freedom. The next one is a building. They all like to work in a particular type of building. And each one of these, if you notice, has got a number next to it. Now, the numbers are always three for the landscape, three for the freedom, and four for the building. And these numbers are what's called the work number. So when you're creating a work of art, you are trying to create the best work of art you can, and that means the work number has to be high. The higher the work number, the more you're going to get paid, uh, which equates effectively to points, because you can uh, you can forego some of that payment to take points instead. Now, the next bits, we'll explain these in more detail later on, but it's basically jesters and different coloured cards in your hand. So all of these are exactly the same in that the landscape is worth three work number, the freedom is worth three, the building is worth four, each jester is worth two, every yellow card is worth one, every blue card is worth one, and the bonus cards are worth a varying amount depending on what's on the bonus card. And the reason I am mentioning that specifically at, up front is because that is the core mechanism of the game. You're going to be hiring these professionals, hiring these artists, using them to create works of art. The better the work of art, the more money stroke points you're going to get. That's probably it. So to start with, we each have 3,500 florins behind our screen. So that's the, the currency in the game is, is florins. It isn't worth any points at the end of the game, but it is a tiebreaker. So we've each got that. Now it's behind our screen, so it is supposed to be kept secret. Uh, there is an auction mechanism in the game. But to start with, would you mind dealing four of them each? So we get four profession cards each. And out of those four, we're going to choose three of them to keep. And then the other one gets shuffled back into the deck. And while you're doing that, I'm going to pick a start player at random. It's going to be that one, green. So, Robert, you are the start player. Thank so you. you get this very large start player marker. And now we're going to choose some cards. So what you're looking for on these cards, and I might just show you mine, actually on screen here. So these are the four cards I've got. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for synergies. Now, because buildings are always worth four, as opposed to landscapes and freedoms, I'm seeing if any of mine have the same building. If they do, I, I'd be tempted to go with that. Uh, they're not. So I'm now looking to see if there's anything similar. OK, so there is something in common between these three. So I'm, I'm going to take that. So this is the one I'm not going to take. Those go into your hand, and the one you don't want gets shuffled into here. Now, one of the first differences that I will tell you about between a three, four, and a five player game is that there are always 21 profession cards. So in a three player game, we've got three each. That means there are nine left in here. In a five player game, is that right? Three, nine, no, there's 12 left in here. There's 12 left in here in a three player game. I can't add up. In a five-player game, there would only be six left in here. And because hiring these artists in order for them to create works of art for you is the main way that you're going to get victory points in the game, uh, these are a very tight commodity in a five-player game, uh, and they will go very, very quickly. Not so much in a three-player game, so less competition for those. Right, so now that we've done that, we've got our money. Let's explain briefly how the game plays. So seven rounds. And I'm just going to press this button here. Is it the right one? It is the right one. So we have seven rounds, which is tracked by this disc here. Uh, the number in the circle is the round number. The number underneath the circle is the minimum work number that your work of art has to be for you to create it. So in round one of the game, if any of us want to make a work of art, it has to be worth at least seven. If it isn't worth seven, you can't do it. And that gets harder as the game goes on. But each round is divided into two phases. And what they've done is they've designed the board that everything on this side, this is phase A and this is phase B. So we're going to explain how phase A works first, and then we'll explain phase B when we go into phase B. So phase A is we are auctioning off one of these stacks. So the start player, which is Robert, Robert is going to choose one of these seven stacks and he's going to put his pawn on it. He's going to go for a jester. I thought he might. Uh, and then he starts the bid. Now, the starting bid always has to be 200. In a two-player game, it's 300. But in a three-to-five-player game, it's 200. You cannot change that. It has to be a starting bid of 200. 
Uh, and then we go clockwise from there around the table and each subsequent player can pass or they can bid 100 higher. Now the seven different stacks that are available are parks, lakes and forests, which are three different types of landscapes. We have builders, which give you discount on building buildings and allow you to build uh, adjacent. And we have jesters. Now jesters are very, very powerful. And I'll tell you this, I don't normally cover strategy or tactics in any of my videos, but having played this game about 40 or 50 times 20 years ago, I can tell you that jesters are very powerful and jesters will generally go for a lot more money than the rest of the stuff that's here. We learned that after playing it many, many times a long time ago. There's also prestige cards. These are end of game scoring cards uh, and these are recruitment cards. Now, the other big difference in the way that a three, four and five player game plays out is we might not see these cards today. In a five player game, you see these cards all the time. And that's because these cards allow you to recruit an artist from another player who's already played them. And as I mentioned, there, there are just not enough artists to go around in a five player game. So you'll find people taking these cards and then recruiting them off each other. Uh, don't worry, it's not like a take that game. The player who you take them off doesn't lose anything. But in a three player game, we might not see these cards played at all. Did we see any in our game this afternoon? We didn't, so. no. no, we didn't. Anyway, Robert has bid 200 for a jester. So now what happens is it comes to me and I either pass or I say 300. I'm going to say 300. 400. 500. 600. 700. 800. I'm going to go 900 because of the way this afternoon's game played out. I'm going to say 1,000 because of the way this <laughs> afternoon's game played. They went for about 800 this afternoon, I think, or maybe 900. So it's 1,000 to you. Pass. I'm going to pass as well. So what happens is the player who's left in pays that amount of money to the bank, takes one of those things. Now, jesters go in here on the theatre stage. And then what you do is you put that player's pawn on that space. Now, that represents two things. The first thing is Pete can, now long, can no longer bid on anything else. So each player can only win one auction per round. That is it. Pete has won the auction. He cannot take part in any other bidding. The second thing that this pawn represents is that jesters now cannot be chosen again. So the jesters have gone for this round and Pete is out for this round. So it's just me and Robert, you're still the start player. You get to choose another one to bid for. Okay, right. I'm I going thought, for builders. I thought you might. So I'm going to say, and you're, you're saying 200. I'll say 300. You haven't said what builders do. I haven't said what builders do. I, I, <laughs> I, I've made, I said they make buildings cheaper. Right. Four. 400. Yeah. You can have it for 400. Okay. okay. So the pawn stays on there. Robert pays 400 and he puts his builder on his player board here. So let me just show you my player board. That's not my player board. That's my player board. Uh, so your builders go on these three spots here and you'll see this here. What this means is your second builder will get you three points. This is the symbol for victory points. And your third builder will also get you three points. What the builders do is printed on here. Um, a building normally costs 700. If you have one builder, then your building costs 300. And in fact, every building you build is 300. Uh, if you have two builders, then your buildings can be built orthogonally adjacent to each other. Normally they cannot be built orthogonally adjacent. And if you have three builders and you can never have more than three, then your buildings are free. So that, that's what builders do. Um, now, there's only me left in, which means I can have whatever I want for 200. Now I'm very tempted to take the thing that I want, but also I'm tempted to take one of these. Because these are prestige cards. These are end of game scoring cards. And if I take one right at the start of the game, it gives me something to aim for. But. No, I'm going to take a forest. So I'm going to take a forest. So 200. You two have paid your money. Yep. I'll pay. So I'll take my forest. And my forest goes anywhere I want in here. In fact, I've got the wrong side of the board. I've sneakily shown you the cooperative version of the game. So apologies for that. Um, it can go anywhere on here whatsoever. Now, this is not a building. This is a landscape. So landscapes can go orthogonally adjacent to your um, palace. 
and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to put it there. You can also flip these over and orient them any way you want. There's all sorts of rules, like you can't overlap the edge of the board, you can't overlap another building or anything like that. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to put it, uh, put it there like that. So that's that. And that's the end of phase A. So we, we all bought one thing, which means phase A comes to an end. And we now take our pawns back and we now go into phase B. So phase B of the round is this part of the board. So in phase B, each player takes it in turn in player order and you get two actions. Now, the different actions that you can do are printed on a reference card. In fact, the reference card actually has quite a lot of really good information on it. Um, but what we're looking at is this is the auction stuff here that we've just seen. Uh, what we've got here is we've got all of the different actions that you can do in phase B. And you get two actions. You can complete a work of art. You can build a building. You can draw a bonus card. You can take a profession card and you can take a freedom. Now notice that three of these have the number two next to them. And these two have a number one next to them. What that means is you can do this twice if you want to. You can do this twice, you can do this twice, but you can only do this once. It still only uses one action, but you can only do it once. And this can only be done once as well. So let's go through briefly what the five different actions are. The first one is completing a work of art. That means playing one of your artists from your hand onto the table, working out the value of the work of the art, the work of art that they've made, and then getting paid or victory points accordingly. And as I mentioned earlier, the work of art that they create has to be the minimum value is based on the round number. So anything created this round has to have a minimum work number of seven. We'll explain that more when it's done, but that's basically that action. The other action you can do is build a building. Now, Robert, you have one builder. So your buildings are 300. For me and Pete, buildings are 700. The buildings, there's three different sizes. There's large, medium, and small. It costs the same no matter the size of the building. You basically take the building and you build it onto your, uh, onto your sheet. Now, I mentioned earlier, unless you have two builders, you are not allowed to build orthogonally adjacent. Diagonally is fine, that, that's allowed, but you're not allowed to build orthogonally adjacent unless you have two builders. And this is Paul in the editing room. There is a rule that I completely forgot when teaching this game, and that is every time you build a building, you get three points. We didn't do that for this entire game. So just be aware when you're watching this playthrough, every time we build a building, we were supposed to score three points. I'm gonna add another note at the end of this video to show what the actual scores were. You can take a freedom. So the freedoms are limited. There is always one fewer than the number of players in the game. So we're playing a three player game today, which means there's two of each freedom. Uh, you spend 300 as printed on here and you take the freedom and you put it on your player board. Another thing you can do is you can buy a profession card. Um, what you do is you pay 300, you take the top five cards of the deck, choose one, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom in any order you want to. And then the last thing you can do is buy a bonus card. Again, you pay 300, draw the top five, put one into your hand, put the rest on the bottom in any order. Now, what do the bonus cards do? Because we've not mentioned these yet, but each bonus card uh, can be played when you're creating a work of art. So they, they are, it costs you an action to take a bonus card, but you play them at the instant you're creating a work of art. And what it does is it boosts the value of the work number for that work of art, which in the later rounds, when you're struggling to get these high numbers, it can be a bonus. But also at the end of each round, there is a three point reward for the player or players who made the best work of art that round. So those bonus cards not only get you more money for creating a better work of art, but they'll help you get that bonus as well. So that's the actions explained briefly. Robert, you've got two actions. What would you like to do? Mm, I feel like gaining one of the freedoms. So I can see that some of my people want freedom of religion. Okay. So that so you pay freedom of religion will cost me... There we go, that's 500. And it just goes on your board. Now there's no points for taking that, but what that means is any time Robert uses a card to create a work of art and they like that freedom, then that's gonna make them their work of art more valuable. And so you're not then, allowed to do take a freedom again this round. Right. Yeah. 
I will get another personality okay, card. So 300. Let's draw five, choose one. Put the rest of the bottom. So while Robert's doing that, I'll start taking my turn. Um, now then, I would like to buy a building, but I don't have any builders, so buildings are really expensive. So I think what I'm going to do is I am also going to take freedom, 300. Um, now then. I'm also going to take the freedom of religion, so that goes there. So they're gone. There's only two of them in a three-player game. Remember, there's one fewer than the number of players in the game. That one. You're all done. Back. Let's go on the bottom. Uh, and then I think I am going to create a work of art. So we're going to have an we're going to have an early work of art, and it's going to be. The sculptor. So let's show this on the big screen. Uh, this is the card that I'm using to create a work of art. So what we now do is we go through all of these things on the left hand side and we work out what the work number is or the value of this, this work of art. So the first thing to check is do I have a forest? Yes I do have a forest so my work number is three. The next thing is do I have the freedom of religion? Yes I do so that's another three. The next one is do I have a studio which is that building? No I don't. OK, so we're stuck at six. The next one is two for every jester that I have. I don't have any jesters. But the next thing is one value for every yellow card or blue card. And that is either in my hand or on the table, including the one that I've just played. So because I've got the forest, that's three. Because I've got the freedom of religion, that's three. and I've got one card, two, three cards. So the value of the work of art that I've made is nine. So what you do is you put the pawn on there to show that you've made a work of art of value nine. Now, if you remember earlier on, I did say you get two actions and you can produce two works of art. If you do, both works of art individually must meet the minimum requirement for the round and you track the highest one on here. So if I made one in the round that was worth nine and another one that was worth seven, I'd leave that on nine because that represents that's the best work that I've made this round. Now, each point of value gets you 100. So because I've made a work of art that's value nine, I'm going to get 900 florins. However, this is at the point where for every 200 of those florins, I say, no, thank you. I get a point. And this is one of the really tricky decisions to make in the game is how much of this money do you take as money? Because you're going to need money during the game. Or how much do you take as points? And that all depends on the group. If you've got a group that is being very generous and letting everybody have what they want for 200, you're not going to need that much money in the game. But if you've got a group that's regularly paying a thousand for jesters, for example, <laughs> then those people buying jesters might need more money. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take... I'm going to take 500 in cash and I'm going to say no thank you to that 400, which gets me two actual points. And that is my two actions. I did the freedom and I created a work of art. So, Pete. I'm going to spend 300 and buy a freedom. Freedom of writing. Yeah, the freedoms do go very fast because they are, they are limited supplies. Second action will be to have another. I was hoping Pete wasn't going to make a work of art because he might have been able to make one better than mine. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Choose um, the one you want. I'll choose the one I want and then discard the other. Yeah. While he's doing that, that is the end of the round. So what happens is we now look to see who's made the best work of art. Brackets, the player, the only player to make a work of art, which is me. So I gain three extra fame or prestige at the end of the round. Now, while we're talking about prestige, you can at any time in the game lose one of those to gain 100 florins. It is basically a safety net if you end up in the situation where you don't have enough money and you need to be able to do something. And we did actually do this in the last game, didn't we? Pete, you yeah. spent, you, it was a bit short of money at the end of the game. Yeah. So he lost two points to give him the money that he needed to be able to do something. 
So you can only do it once you've got points, but just remember that once you have points, any time in the game you can lose a point to gain 100 florins. I did come last. You did come last, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the end of the round has happened. We move on to round two. Start player marker passes, and we go to the auction phase again. Now, just before we continue with the auction phase, I will just briefly mention what these things do again. Builders, we've seen, they make your buildings cheaper and allow you to build orthogonal. Jesters, if I'd had a jester, my work of art would have been better. So every jester you have increases the work number of every work of art you make by two. Uh, the landscapes, we've seen what they do. Basically, each of the artists likes to work in a particular uh, type of landscape. The prestige cards we've not seen yet, but these are end of game scoring cards. And the recruitment cards we're probably not going to see in this game. If we don't see them, then I'll explain how they work at the end of the video, because you will see them in a four player game and you will definitely see them in a five player game. Right, so it's me first. I am going to start the bidding on a jester for 200. Three. <laughs> 400. 500. Six. 700. 800. Nine. Um, Who got the jester last time? And you paid a thousand for it? Yeah, I think. The laughter never stopped. I'll go thousand. The laughter never stopped in our house. A thousand. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pass a thousand. Pass. Okay. Yes. So the going price for jesters clearly is a I thousand. I happen to have a thousand. Just a thousand florins. Florin note in my back pocket. There you go. Have a jester. Thank you. And because I started the bid but didn't win the bid, that means I get to go again. Right, what are we going to bid for now? Let's bid for a builder. I'll say 200 for a builder. Three. I'm having deja vu here. Um, 400. Mine? Mine for 400. And I will have a forest for 200. Okay. While Pete's taking a forest, there is one thing that I wanted to mention about the landscapes. So I already have a forest. Okay. Any artist that requires a forest will get three added to their work number because I have at least one forest. If I have two forests, it isn't six. It isn't three per forest. It's three if I have at least one forest. But you can buy more than one forest and you can buy more than one lake and you can buy more than one park. And the reason why you might do that is every landscape of each type beyond the first gets you three immediate points. So this is what I did in the last game. It got near the end of the game. I already had a forest. I didn't need another one, but I took one because my second forest got me an immediate three points. And the last two games that I've played of this, the winning score was about 50-ish. I think it was 49 last night, and I think you won with 53 earlier on. So you're looking at about 50 points. Um, if you own this game and you've played this game and you play it three-player, let me know what your scores are. But that, that seems to be what our scores are for a three-player game. Uh, Pete, what did you want? You, you bought the forest, didn't you? I bought that's the forest. It, that's, that's it. That's the end of the auction phase. Right, my turn. I've got two actions. I now have a builder, so my buildings are 300. So I am going to build a building, I think. Then again, there's a freedom. I'm going to have to take that freedom. So I'm going to spend 300. I'm going to take that freedom. That goes there. Right. Freedom of opinion. Freedom of, uh, yeah, I, I've got the freedom to write whatever I want. Um, now, do I want to create a work of art this round? No, I don't. So I'm going to spend another 300 and I'm going to recruit a character. Pete, hey, you'll go. So draw five, choose one. I'm going to spend 300 on that freedom. Freedom to travel. And then... I'm going to take that one. I'm going to commission a work. Okay. I don't, I don't think there's enough, there's not enough lawyers in Florence at the moment, so um, let's... Um, it's a legal scholar. A legal scholar. So the first thing is, do you have the appropriate landscape that the legal scholar wants? I do. Which is a forest. He likes woods. 
for some reason. Months. Do you uh, have the freedom to write? I do. Which is six. Do you have the building that they want to work in? No. Which is a library. You'll have to go in the garden. Okay. How many jesters do you have? One. So that's two for the jester. And now how many blue and yellow cards do you One, have? One, two, three, four. So work number is 12, which meets the minimum requirement. That is 1,200 florins. How much of that do you want in money? I'm going to take uh, all of it as points. All of it as points? You're not having any of the money? No, I, I'm, I'm not in this for the money. Six points. <laughs> all about the glory. So was that your first action? Oh, no, your first action was to take yeah. the freedom. Second action was to play the legal scholar. So right. Me done. So you're done. Robert. So I'm the last player in the round. You are. So you're getting three points for the best work so far. Yes. If I can, can beat that, I could take those three points yeah, if away you from equal it, you get the three points as well. Yeah. If you can beat it, yeah. you get the three points. So I'm feeling short of actions already. I've got two actions. Yeah. I'd like to do this work. Is the thing. I'd like to get the... There's seven rounds in the game. You get two actions per... You will do 14 actions in the entire game, and you will, you will do seven auctions buy seven things and do 14 actions and that's yeah. it yeah in the whole game yeah <laughs> so yeah i feel i really want to get another person mm -hmm. and so the reason why we're taking extra people is not necessarily to create works of art with them, but when you do create a work of art, every blue card in your hand or on the table is worth an extra one. Basically, your artists get inspired by other artists and they produce better work. So taking a card, certainly at the start of the game, is good because it gives you more options and it boosts the value of all your, all your other artists. So I want this freedom. Okay. That freedom is freedom of travel. That's going to cost me 300. 300. All of the freedoms have gone. So that can go there, and I think I want to get another one of these. So that's another three hundred. That's or then I'll be short of money. So maybe I need to make very difficult. Um, Are you people buying these expensive jesters? <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a new person. Yeah, so okay. pay three hundred for that. Okay. So I need some change. Can you give me 200? There you go. Thank you. Five cards. Right. And that's the end of the round. Okay. So Pete's done the best work of art, gets an extra three points. Yep. And this is where another of the differences comes in between the three, the four, and the five play game. In a three play game, as you've seen, last round only one player did a work of art. This round only one player did a work of art. In a four or five player game, you will very likely have two or three people oh, creating works of art in the same good. round. It will change later on. Later on, we're going to be producing lots of works of art. There you go, sir. Okay, let's take that one. And we'll go underneath. Yeah. Now, just as a reminder, whenever you put cards underneath, you can choose the order that they go in. Doesn't normally matter, but there are certain things that you might want to do. For example, if Robert just drew five cards and he found one that's really good for me, he might want to put that on the bottom of the deck to therefore reduce the chance of me getting it next. So yeah, the rules for taking the prestige card, the um, personality card or the profession card, and the bonus card are the same. You always draw five cards, choose one, put the other four to the bottom in an order of your choice. Right, round three, auction time. Well, anybody? Guess what they think I'm going to do. You're going to go for this card. Close. <laughs> <laughs> Jester, 200. 200 for Jester. 300. 400. 5. 600. Uh, 700. 8. Pass. Pass. 800 okay. for a Jester. Bargain. Yeah. Mm, that sounds quite good to right. me. Right, so, Pete started, you did the bid, you won the bid, which means it passes clockwise. Robert, you now choose what's up for grabs next. Mm. Got one builder. Um, right. I'm going to bid 200 for a 
park. For a park, you can have that. I am not, not interested not in bad. parks at all. Not bad. So you get the park for 200, and I can oh, really? have something else. Now, I think at this stage, I am going to take this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend 200 for one of these prestige cards. So what we do is I'm going to draw the top five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to look at them, take one, add it to my hand, put the other four to the bottom of the deck. Now, at this point in the game, I'm just going to show you the back of the player raid has a complete list of all of the different prestige cards that are included in the game. So if you wanted to know what types of prestige cards there were, uh, this is it. And you, you might want to look at that to see what kind of thing there is before actually uh, choosing them. But at this stage in the game, let's see what we've got. Okay, and we're on round three. And you keep these cards in your hand until the end of the game. Right, well, I'm definitely not going to be able to do that one. Um, if you want to show the camera, I promise not to look. No, it's okay. It's okay. Well, actually, I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show the camera just to show you what they look like. This is what they look like. Each one tells you on it a particular condition. Um, and it tells you the points that you're going to get at the end of the game. And certain ones, if you're tied, you, you get this amount of points for it, if you can see them. So that one, for example, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this one based on how the game's gone so far. Uh, so that's the one that I'm definitely, definitely not having. That one I think I could do. Um, whereas I think that one's probably safer. Yeah, that one's probably safer. So I'm going to put those cards on the bottom of that deck. And that's it. That is the auction phase over. So, phase B turns. I'm going to spend 300 to have another one of these. Yep, so draw five, keep one. That one. And then, second action. Second action. I'm going to play. Great work of art. Yep. Uh, we've got lawyers. We need doctors. Doctors. <laughs> so, do you have the correct landscape? I do. Do you have the correct freedom? I do. Do you have the correct building? No, they're still working in the garden. Okay, right. How many jesters have you got? I have two, two. jesters. So that's two points each. That's ten. You then have five blue cards. Yep. So it's a work number of 15, which yep. is more than or equal to 12. How much of that do you want as money? Uh, I'll take I'll take all of it as money. All of it as money? Yeah, after last <laughs> time, we've decided that our accountant has got involved. It's me now. He set the bar quite high at 15, <laughs> but that, that's the benefit of two jesters. Right. Just as are good. Keep his uh, artists entertained. So um, no building to live in. They're cold. <laughs> they're outside in the rain with their tents, but at least they're entertained. Um, so I want to get a building. I've got one builder, so, so that lowers the cost. Yeah. I want to build this theatre. Yeah. Cost me three hundred money. Yeah. So two hundred change. Yep. Thank you. And then my theatre so can't it, be rotate it. Right. You can't, can't be adjacent. Well, Stuart last night said, "Can I can I cut it up into pieces?" No, <laughs> no, you can't cut the cut put the. <laughs> so is that a good way round for a theatre? It might be. Right. Let's. Uh, what about if it goes? Now, some of you might be watching this thinking, "Well, hang on a minute. He's not allowed to do that because it's adjacent to another building. It's not. The landscapes are not buildings." Ah. Uh... Looking at the shapes of what buildings I yeah. haven't built yet. So maybe I'll I'll have it over here. Because once you've built something, you're not allowed to move it around. Although I would always recommend, if you're playing this game with uh, new players, for the first few rounds, I would allow them to make some slight shifts. That's not in the rulebook at all. The rules of the game are you are not allowed to move your buildings once you've placed them. But I always allow players, new players, a little bit of leniency with that. So I'm going to create a work. Yeah. 
this this dramatist that dramatist. I've been yep. staring at. Um, right. Do you have a park? I see. Yes. Do you have the freedom of religion? Yes. Do you have the appropriate building I've for the I've got the theatre. You do? I've got the theatre. How many jesters do you have? One. one. And how many blue and yellow cards, including the one you've just played? I've got five. Oh, you've stolen it from me. He's stolen it. Huh. 1,700 million thousand florins. Right, let's take... Let's take three as VPs and then the rest. Three as VPs. So that's 600 money, isn't and it? And you get 1,100. Thank you. Yeah. Right, my go. Well, I don't think we're going to bother getting in on that action. Um, we do have one builder, which means my buildings are 300. So I will spend 300. And I'm going to build this big thing. It's a laboratory. And we're going to put it... Where are we going to put it? Can I put it there? Can put it there. So it's mm. diagonally touching the palace, mm. but that's fine. And then for my second action, I am going to buy a bonus card. So again, I spend 300. I take five. Choose one, put the others on the bottom. So bonus cards, as a reminder, you play a bonus card when you're creating a work of art, and it boosts the value of that work of art. And again, I'll just show you these on camera so you can see. These are the different types of cards. Each one says exactly what it does on it, and the number at the bottom is how much it boosts, boosts it by. So let's have a look at these. So that's no good. Oh, uh, that would be... Hmm. Hmm. That's pretty good. That's also pretty good. That's no good. And that's not good. I'm definitely not having those. I'm having that one. Okay, and those are going on the bottom. And I think that's my go done. I built a building, I took a bonus card. That's it. So congratulations on the best work of art for this round. One, two, three, three points. And then these come back. Those come back, we move to round four, start player passes. Thank you. And off we go. Auction time. Auction time. Mm. Would you like? Quite like like a jester. I quite Everybody really likes a jester. Well, so, um, <laughs> I'm going to try that. So two hundred each card. Yeah. Don't want to let you have it for two hundred. So the question is, if I bid three hundred, are you going to go sure? Let me have it for three hundred. That would be that would be telling. It would. I'm going to bid three hundred. Us. I could try the no jester approach. I don't think it will win, but <laughs> four hundred. Okay. Yeah, you can have it for four hundred. So one, two, three, four, five. Go. Take your pick. Uh, and then it's me. So, Jester for 200. 300. 400. 5. 6. 7. 8. Yours. Okay, yeah. It's fine. I've got a Jester. I'm happy. I'll have a Builder for 2. Builder for 200. That is your first Builder. So, no additional points. Everybody's got one Builder. Everybody has one Builder. Yeah. So, oddly... There are only six builders in the game, even though there are seven rounds. There are seven jesters. So if you get the game and you punch it out and you think, wait a minute, I've only got six builders, that is correct. There are only six builders included in the game. Mm. Anything good? Some of these are taking, because I've got a feeling of what strategy feels comfortable to me. Right, okay. And some of these are taking me into strategies that <laughs> I wouldn't have gone into yeah. otherwise. So that's why I'm feeling a bit iffy about some of these. So um, let's see what other people have been building. Mm -hmm. um, 
I could I could keep that one. And theoretically, see. if I'd remembered the four cards that I'd put to the bottom, then I know four of the cards that you haven't got. That's kind right. of an advanced right. level thinking that is a bit beyond me on a Friday night. Okay. I'm going out of my comfort zone now. Okay. And it's your go. We're now into phase B. So I'm the first to do first. actions, right? Yep. Yeah. So um, do I want to build a building? I've got one builder. So, yeah. Um, I want to get another of those, probably. I'm not sure I need. I've got four of them okay i'm going to build a building okay which one so um <clears throat> looking what will fit neatly because i can't go orthogonally adjacent so i oh, think yeah. probably this one university um that would be good for me yep so to build that costs me 300, 300. so let's have 700 change it's my university gonna fit Oh, that's kind of diagonal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll complete a work. Okay. So this one here is the theologian who likes being in the university. So do you have so, the landscape? Yep. Yeah. Do you have the freedom? Yep. Yeah. Do you have the building? Yep. Yeah. Jesters? Yeah, have one one jester. jester. Blue and yellow cards? I've got five. And that's it? Seventeen. Seventeen. So for the last one that you did, wasn't it? Maybe. How much money do you want to take? So um, let's have five points as points. Yeah. So five points for green. I had a plan. <laughs> Before I talk about that plan, I just want to show you my player board. So on the right hand side of the player board, you will see a list of all 21 of the professions which landscape they prefer, which freedom they prefer, and which building they prefer. So you can see that there are each of the large buildings, there are three uh, professions that want to work in it. Uh, the forests, because they are the largest landscape, there are nine of these that want the forest, seven of them that want the lake, and five of them that want the park. So yeah, this is a complete breakdown of all 21 different professions in the game. Right, meanwhile, my go. I'm going to spend 300 to buy another one of these cards. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to have a look at what I've got to see if there's any synergies. Rats. Okay. Um, in which case, it's going to have to be that one. Okay, and my second action is I think I'm also going to be producing a work of art. I just need to check that I've got the right work number. So it's the physicist. I do have a forest, physicist like forests. Uh, I don't have the freedom to travel. He's not very happy. He's going to stay at home. I do have a laboratory for him to work in. I have one jester. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five cards. Which is it. That's the 14. That's the 14 that I needed. So I could at this point play the bonus card. And if the bonus card was worth a bit more than that, then I'd get the, the best work for this round. But I'm going to save it. I'm going to save that bonus mm. card. So 14, which is 1,400 money, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say that I only want 400 of that money and I will take five points. That's my go done. Wait. Okay. I'm going to, well, now I've got a builder. You have a builder, so you're building to well keep use him. Yep. So. I'm trying to build. I'm going to build a, a chapel. Mm -hmm. Seems logical if you have a lawyers and doctors. Yeah. Build a chapel. <laughs> Can't see what's coming next. 
Um, but there is only one profession that needs a chapel. That, that, that is true. And that profession is purveyors of organs. The organ builder. We need an organ. Mm. She's got a tuning fork and a hammer. Yeah. Mm. And she knows how to use them. Right. So forests. <laughs> she likes walking around forests. Yep. Uh, she likes the freedom to write what oh, she wants. Oh, yes, we've got that. She likes a chapel. Yep. So that's up to ten. Jesters. Two. So it's one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, five. Up to 19. Ah. I'll take 100 in money. 100 in money. And then nine points. Yeah. And then that's the end of the round. So you get the bonus three points. Having the best work of art. Mm. Nicely played. Start player passes to me. We go on to round five. Auctions. It's not a long game, is it? Certainly not with three. Yeah, we need... You can play this game in an hour with three players. Yes. Mm. Um, okay, so I know what I need, but what do I want? Because <laughs> <laughs> they are two different things. I'm going to say 200 for a jester. Three. 400. 500. Six. 700. Pass. Pass. Got another jester. 700 for a jester. Right, back to me. Now then. What do I want? What do I think Pete wants? So at this point, I am just going to have a look at your cards. And I will explain. I will explain these recruitment cards now. So these yellow cards are recruitment cards. There's five of them included in the game. They're all absolutely identical. Uh, you bid on them as an auction in phase A. And if you gain one, then it goes into your hand. Now, the first thing is that it counts as a profession card when it's in your hand for the purposes of determining uh, the work number. So each, each yellow card increases your work number by one. But also, at any point in the game, you can use it and you swap it for a profession card already played by another player. Now, what happens is you take that card off them, it gets replaced by that, and that card goes into your hand. The other player has not lost anything by you doing that. That card that they now have counts as a profession card for all purposes. Um, but what it means is that you can take the card played by somebody else and use it yourself to create a work of art. The reason why I'm looking now is I'm looking to see if either of you two have used a professional to create a work of art that is of any use to me. And if there was, I might be interested in that, but there isn't. So yeah, in a three play game, you're probably not going to see these. You might see them in a four play game, probably will. You will definitely see these in a five play game. They will be very, very much in demand. Right, so instead, now a second builder yeah 200 for a builder three four yours okay so 400 for a second builder and you remember what i said earlier your second builder gets you three points. So there you go. I gained three points. Pete, I have whatever you want for 200. Oh, you're taking one. Mm -hmm. So that must mean one of us two has played a card that Pete no, wants. Or so we won't lose anything. Or, He'll just... as we discussed this afternoon, it's just another card in hand. Yes. So it's like... Half a jester is the way you described it earlier. So you, you might increase the value that. of every, every work, work that you one. complete after yeah. that point. Okay, right. So we're done. Two actions each. Okay, so where are we? We're on round five. Time is a running out. Um, right. What's going on with this one? What did I just get? I just got my second builder, didn't I? Okay, right. So I am going to spend 300 
and I'm going to build a university. I mean, you've already got They're good. I and I've got two builders, so mine can go adjacent, so I can put it there. Absolutely put it there. Uh, right. Do I want to create a work of art? If I did, would it be good enough? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. It would be seventeen. So, problem is, you've got. Oh, no, you two have both got two jesters. Right, okay. Still, 17. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to use the Philosopher. So I do have a forest. I do have the freedom of writing. I do have a university. I have one jester. And I have one, two, three, four, five cards. So it's 17. So out of that 17, I am going to take... Uh, well, I'm definitely taking the 100. And then I'm going to take another 400. So I'm leaving 1,200, which is six points. And that's my two actions done. I bought a university, and I created a work of art with a philosopher. I'm going to build. Mm -hmm. What did you build in? At a cost of 300. I'm going to build a uh, one of these. Laboratory. laboratory. I think you can guess what's coming next. Sir Isaac Newton. Oh, you're actually doing it. Right. I'm going to steal so, your. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my physicist. physicist. There you go. So we've seen the cards. We've seen the cards used. And. And that isn't an action. No, to, to, free... to, and you're not stealing them. It well, can... you kind of are. It says here it's a it's a recruit card. It's a free action. Yep. Free action doesn't doesn't cost you an action to play it. So I do that for free. So I've done one action, which is building the observatory, the laboratory. Yeah. Now I'm my second action is going to be to play. The my physicist. physicist. Yeah. He, he, he's, he, he, he didn't like the facilities that you provided. Did you tempt him with a bag of sweets? <laughs> yeah. And, and 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 a chapel. And a chapel. And he quite fancied the organ builder as well. So, right. But, Right. So, do you have a forest? I do. Do you have the freedom of travel? I do. You see, I didn't have the freedom of travel. That's why. This is that's, why. That's why. So he's left me. He's travelled to you. Uh, do you have the laboratory? I do. You have two jesters. So we're at 14. And you have six. one, two, three, four, five, six. Putting you up to 20. Um, I'll fit half and half. So five points. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um. Really didn't think we were going to see them, but I, I just had the card that matched well, yep, then, what you needed. Yep, absolutely. I could. I also saw it as an alternative to going to the yeah. professions market yeah. as an action. Because it's 200 instead of 300, but it's. Yeah, it's it's the auction instead of the action, isn't it? It's... Yeah, and you get it for free, so it doesn't cost you an action to get. Um, yeah, it costs you two hundred the bid, but yeah. it isn't using an action. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm wanting to build more stuff. But right. I haven't got enough builders for them to be touching each other. Yeah. So I'm starting to feel a little, a little bit cramped. So, um, and I can't buy, buy a builder here. You can only nope. get a builder in the order. Builder here. So. I'm going to go for a bonus card. Okay. So, so you 300. 300. Draw five. Put one in your hand, put the others on the bottom in any order. So... Is 
The only end of game scoring in this game is this prestige cards. So once the seventh round is done, everybody plays their prestige cards, scores points accordingly, and then money is the tie break. That's it. And a good one. Um, yeah, I think I think I've got a good one here. Okay. So that's a good one. Those go back. I'm not going to worry too much about the order. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't think I'm going to use it yet. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've, kept but, on, um, I've not used it yet. So... Um, that one... So I will build a building. Okay, for 300. Um, yeah. Which one do you want? Maybe I want to complete a work because I'm getting a bit low on sure, money. Buddy. Yeah. So if I did this one. How much would that be? Well, maybe it's got to be at least fifteen. Right. So if I did, and you've got five cards and one jester. No, two jesters. So there's nine. So you need to get another nine somehow. Which means you need all three of those things. Have I got that right? Um, Two justices or a bonus. Four. Oh yeah, or a bonus card. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I can do it with two of the two of the things on the top. Have I miscounted then? So two of the things on the top would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen. Unless one was Sorry, a building. Yeah, you don't need nine. If one's you need a building. Six. I was doing this. So work. um I think it's worth building something. Yeah, any two of the three things on the top and you can do it. So this one I'm wondering whether to play this bonus card, because it might get me first. Yeah, well right edition. now you're on sixteen. So um, 7, 12, 16. So if I played this bonus card... Um, Is it worth five? No, I won't play that yet. Okay. So I'll just go up to 16. So 16. So, and let's get... Um, what did you get to 16? Uh, he's got the freedom. He's got the building, which is seven. Two justices is 11. And five cards, okay. 16. So let's take... Um, uh, let's take six hundred in money, mm -hmm. and then five points. Yeah. Okay. So best work of art, is this one. So three more points. Round six, An ultimate round. Just at two hundred. Just for two hundred. Funny thing is, I could take one of these and I could recruit that physicist back to me and use them again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pass. 300 for a jester. Four. 500. Jules. Okay, you can start the bidding on something else. So we've all got two jesters. Yeah. Very different from the last game we played, mm. where Robert got four. Shouldn't let you have four in the last game. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, that's me out. I'm not going to get the thing I really wanted this round. Builder for two. 300. You can have it. You get the builder for 300. 200. Repeat what you want for 200. Go for another one of them. That's three points for me. Yes, three points for green. One, That's two, your second builder. Three. 
So it's me to go. It is you to go. Two actions. Right. My builder uh, is going to build, because that's what he does. Um, about 300. And he's going to build a university. Oh, my. It's getting very intellectual over here. <laughs> um, First action, build the university. And there, that's all the university's got. I'm going to have what? that. <laughs> and then, first action. First action was to build the university. Was to build the university, yeah. yeah sorry. Second oh, action yes. is going to be to get philosophical. Um, so, yes. Morris. Yes. Freedom. Yes. Building. Two gestures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cards. 21. Making it look easy. And I'll have that. And 10, ten points. points. It's 39. Ten. Mm -hmm. Right, Robert. Oh my god. And you've still got two happen. characters left. So if I do this. You've created five works of art. And you're probably going to do. I don't I'm going to build a building. You can do two next round. So I can build a building for 300. Yep. And I would like to do... A tower. A tower. Very attractive. Right, so where could that fit in? Let's put it, it here. It can go orthogonally adjacent. So if I put buildings. it there, that works right. quite well. And then I'll probably complete a work. So... Do you have any prestige cards, Pete? No, you don't. Okay. So I complete this. This is astronomer. Okay. He likes going yeah. in the tower. So where's your? So. So you've got the freedom got... of religion. So you I've don't got... have the forest. You got no. the freedom of religion. I've got the building. You got the building. I've got two, two gestures. gestures, and then I've Six got. Six cards. Only blue five, and yellow ones. Five cards. I've got five blue and yellow. Five cards. Um, and you could play the bonus so card if I you play want. So this. Currently on 16. Yes, I'll play that. Okay. Each building size in your principality increases the yep. work value and by two. I've got small, small medium, medium, and large. And large. So it's an extra six. Oops, 22. Well done. That yeah. one's out of the game. That is gone out of the game. Bonus cards are one use only. How much of that 2,200 florins mm. do you not want? Um, hmm. Let's have Let's have four hundred as money. So 400 is money, leaving 1,800. That's nine, nine points. points. OK, my go. Well, I had a plan, but I think that plan is <laughs> going to change. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Yeah. So I'm going to spend 300. I'm going to buy another one of these. Right. Come on, Paul. Get lucky. No, 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 no. Rubbish, Right. So I'm going to take that one. Oh no, 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 hang on. Uh, oh, it's all gone a bit horribly wrong.
There. Okay, so let's just do some maths. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, six. Yeah, okay, we're okay. Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have taken one. Or did I need to? No, I needed to. Right. Okay, and then I am going to create a work with. <sighs> hmm. Alchemist. So I do not have a lake. I do have writing. I do have the laboratory. I do have two jesters. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six cards. She puts me on the 17, so I didn't need to take that card. Oh, that's a massive mistake. That's a huge mistake. I should have taken another bonus card. Yeah, because then I could have done two works next turn. Oh dear, that's a terrible mistake. I'm going to take 300 in cash. Uh, and then seven points. Right. Three points for green. Three points for green. The best work of art. And now we go to the final round of the game. And I'm going to need a cup to cry into. Yes. All right, I am. That's a big mistake. Well, gosh. So. Bidding. Yeah, Bidding. yeah, what do I want? Um, mm. I'm going to bid 200 on another one of those cards. I'm going to pass. Three. Four hundred. Oh. You can have it. Four hundred. So that's five hundred upon hundred change. Big amount of points at the end of the yeah, game. I got anything. Now then, Pete, we'll come to an agreement here. <laughs> Tell me what you want. <laughs> Good. Two hundred for a like. Want that. Jules. Okay. Yes. <laughs> don't think I'll... Yeah, I don't want that. Um, oh no, not another one. Uh, what is going on? Don't want that. As I mentioned at the start, these cards never get used in a three player game. Okay, I'll keep that one. And Pete's had three of them. These ones go under the pile. Don't care about the order. Pete's taken another recruitment card. Oh. Yeah, I know. Oh. You're doing it deliberately just because I said they wouldn't be used. You're doing well with them. Right, we are ready for the final. Because it, in a way, it takes away the randomness of these. You can get the exact you one you get want. The exact as long one as, you want, as long as it's been played. Yeah, as long as nobody else has nabbed it before you. Mm. Okay, so I want to build a building, which will be the, just checking I've got the right one, the laboratory. Everyone's building laboratories nowadays. Yep. That's a good place. Oh, that's quite a good place to fit it in. Um, that costs 300. It's allowed to touch the other buildings. Then I'm going to, my botanist is going to do a work. So the botanist has a park. Yeah. Which they like. They have freedom of religion. Yeah. Uh, they have a, la a laboratory now. Yeah. Uh, I've got two jesters. Two jesters. And I've got five um, thingies. 19. 19. So, right, it's the last round of the game, so I'm guessing so 100 cash. I think that's a good idea. Nine yeah. points. Yeah. And that's it? That's it. That is it. I've done two actions. You've done two actions. Right. So, that rule that we mentioned earlier on about spending points to get money, 
That's what I'm doing. Because mm -hmm. I've miscounted. So I spend two points to get 200. With the 100 I have. I'm going to lend you those at a favourable rate of interest. <laughs> Another part of the uh, Renaissance economy, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to take five of these. Right. Useless. Meh. 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 Good. Right. That was my first action. My second action is I am going to produce a work of art and... It's going to be this one, the composer. So we have the lake for the composer to sit next to. We have the freedom of writing. We do not have the opera house. We have two jesters. We have one, two, three, four, five, six cards in total. And then just to demonstrate that you can play more than one bonus card with a work, each jester and each freedom. I have two jesters, I have two freedoms. So that's four. And each of the following categories. Park, no. Lake, forest, jester, builder, prestige card, and freedom. I think that's probably mm. going to win. The... Which is 26, which mm. is 13 points. That's mm. going to get you the most prestigious. I'm hoping so, but I'm still way behind mm. you. If you can do two works of art this round, I think you've won easily. Although... I've got two. Robert's got two end of two. game scoring cards. So, yeah. I, yeah, it's between you two. So this is the final This is turn. the final turn of the game. Right, well, I'm going to do a free action. I'm it's going to exchange again. <laughs> that. So, oh, so we'll have a theologian. Well, bye we've got bye a chapel. theologian. We've got a chapel. I'll tell you what, let's put him in between the, the lawyer and the physicist, just so they can have a fight. Um, so, I haven't got the park. You haven't got the park, okay. But I have got a compass. Freedom of travel. And I have got... Um, university. A university. I've got two jesters. Two jesters up to 11. And uh, I've got Total one, blue, two, blue, three, blue, four, yellow. five, six, seven, eight. Eight. That's 19. But I can't compete with your no. bonus card so it's, awesomeness. It's, it's 100 cash and nine points. And you've got a second one. Well, I think. Oh, let's just see how far I get. Can I? Can I? Can I do this? I need seventeen, don't I? So I've you got four here. You've got four from the building. You don't have the lake. No. You don't have the freedom. No. You've got one, two, three, four. You've got two jesters. Yeah. And you had how many cards? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. 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 Putting you up to 16. So that's not quite enough, is no. it? I needed 17. Yeah, so you can't do two works this turn. So, I won't do two works this turn. No. So, slight undo on your first action. Don't do that as your first action. Buy a bonus card as your first action. Okay. Well, if you want to. I mean, you don't, you don't need to take two actions. No, it makes sense to do so. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Buy a bonus card. I can't, oh no! Yeah, but, I well, can't. I can't get a second action that will allow that one. So taking another one of those, yes, will guarantee you to make a work of art that's worth twenty instead of ninety, which okay. is worth one extra point guaranteed. But the chance of you drawing five bonus cards and getting one that gives you more than one is highly I, I, likely. I, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. So we're going to slight, slightly rewind. Pete's going to do two, this. One, two, three, four, five. Before he did the work of art. So you're only saying that so that if I win, it doesn't count. Yes. <laughs> no. now, we've not added your points on yet, have we? Oh no, we did. We've done the yeah. points for the first work of art. Yeah, but, but we haven't had it. The extra it points. could be more than that. It could be more than that because mm. it's now in the. It's going to be the second action after the. Yeah. So I think if I play this one, each of your own professional oh, and recruiting cards increases the work value number by, by one. one. So how many have you got on, on the table? One, two, three, four, five. It says including the one that you've just played. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so it's another six. Oh. Which is another three points. So you're at plus 50. But I've still just about managed to make the best work for this round. So one, two, three. 
And, and that's that, all down to and that is it. Rob Screen. Well, we'll do, we'll do mine first because okay. I've only got one. Okay. And this is not going to win me the game because it's not going to get me eleven points. It is going to get me seven points. One builder, one jester, and two landscapes. Seven points, putting me on forty-seven. Right. I've got two. You got two. The first one I had was the most buildings, and I I didn't feel comfortable with choosing that card, but all the other ones were even so. Do you I did a lot of jesters before, yes. so I think I've got the most. One, two, three, four. So yes. that's the most. You've got the yes. most buildings. So that's six, six points. points. Forty-six, and, and then the other one. The if I have at least two large buildings, I get five points for that. Do. I've got two large buildings. Puts you on fifty-one. Ooh, so interesting. Reveal your screens. <laughs> Three hundred, eleven hundred. Wow, very good. So Pete wins on the tiebreaker. And this is Paul again in the editing room, just with an update on what the final scores should have been. So at the end of the game, Pete had built three buildings, so he should have had nine extra points. Robert built four buildings, so Robert should have had 12 extra points. Uh, and I only built two buildings, so I only got six extra points. So the actual winner of the game was Robert with not 51 points, but actually 63 points. So 63 points was the winning score. Pete came second with 60, and then I came third with 53. Now, there is one thing that I wanted to mention at the end of this video. I have spoken to a lot of people about this game because I posted the fact that I received a new copy of it and I posted it on various Facebook groups. And a lot of people said, I remember this game from 20 odd years ago. Really, really good, but didn't work at three players at all. It's only good at four and five players. And I would just like to say that whilst the four and five player game might be more interactive, the three player game works absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with the three-player game, but I think it does shine at four and five players. There are other games where you don't play them at a certain player count because they're just not very good, but I think this one worked perfectly well um, at this player count. Certainly at the start, when in round one, one of us produced a work of art, and in round two, one of us produced a work of art, there wasn't much going on there. But later on, you saw how tense it got at the end. Mm. You're always going to be producing works of art at the end because they're going to be worth... They're going to be worth more points. Right. Shall we just very briefly mention all of the other stuff that comes with this game? So there is a solo mode. I haven't read the rules of the solo mode yet, but there is a solo mode included. What I will mention is the Muse and the Princess expansion. So this is not for the solo mode. This is for two to five players. And what you have is you have these extra cards and there is a new phase between A and B. So after you've done the auction, but before you do the, the action turns, there are these cards. And what you do is you put these cards out on the table somewhere, wherever, and then it's an extra auction, but you're auctioning for these cards. And each card has a special ability that, that does something different. So that's, yeah, a little mini expansion that, that happens in here and makes it a little bit more interesting. The other thing that they've included in this game, this is quite interesting. We were reading about this this afternoon. This is the cooperative building expansion so this isn't it doesn't turn it into a cooperative game but what you do if you're playing with this variant you use the other side of the boards and in a three-player game you can see here in fact let's just zoom in a bit there you go you arrange them out in different patterns depending on the number of players and what you do is when you build something in this game you can make an agreement with the player sat to your either your left or your right that you can share some of the cost. And what you do is you build the building on the border or overlapping both of your boards, and then you both get the benefit from the building. So I quite like to play with this one at some point. I think it does add an extra little element uh, to the game. So yeah. So that's your neighbours on left and right. Neighbours on left and right. Like, like the yeah. between two cities yeah, type of idea. That, that yeah. sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, the back of the rule book does have a list of all of the different bonus cards and the prestige cards. Not that it's needed, because I think I think they're fairly clear from, from what they say on them. And there's the rules overview on the back of the rule book, as well as the player aids as well, with everything on there. So I think we're all done. Thank you very much to you two for joining me this afternoon and this evening. Uh, thank you very much to all of my patron supporters who've been watching this live and keeping an eye on us. I don't think we made any mistakes during the game, so that was good. 
Uh, and also a big thank you to WizKids for uh, supporting the channel, sponsoring this video. Um, and yeah, giving me the opportunity again to play a game that I first played 23 years ago. Uh, I remember playing it a lot then. I don't know exactly how many times I played it back then, um, but it's 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 good to get it to the table. And I kind of hope that it now finds a new audience. It's a game I've been hoping to play for more than <laughs> probably, probably about 15 years. Yeah. And it's the first time I've actually first got the game. actually so, got a chance to play it. Yeah. So I've never played it before today. There you go. Right. We're all done now. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I will see you next time. Give the video a like, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment in the description. Let me know what scores you normally get in a three player game. And uh, yeah, just let me know if you found this found this interesting. Um, and yeah, if you're in a position to be able to support the channel, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. I do rely on the financial support of the channel to keep the channel going. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for watching. Take care. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.